Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I'm super excited to review a 3D printer that is a few generations ahead of any printer in the market, the Bamboo Lab X1. It's going to blow every printer between $500 to $5,000 away, including my favorite Prusa and the gold standard of desktop Ultimaker 3D printers. Bamboo Lab first contacted me back in March. They are a new tech company, and the founder, Dr. Tao, was from DJI. They invited me to review their first 3D printer, which Dr. Tao and his team have been working on since 2020. As I can imagine, when they were working on drones, they must have used a lot of 3D printing for prototyping. So, we can expect to see a 3D printer made by a group of former DJI engineers who also know 3D printing pretty well. This printer has three different options, the X1 Basic, the X1 Carbon, and the X1 Carbon with AMS, an automatic material system that supports four different rolls of filament. If you can get the super early bird Kickstarter price, you can get the top of the line, most advanced system for just $1,000, which is amazing. Some people may say Kickstarter campaigns are not 100% safe, some campaigns are trash, and some failed and never delivered the product, which is true, but I suppose that even if you buy something directly from a website, it's still not 100% safe. The seller can still take your money and not ship you anything. But if this is the case, PayPal or your credit card company can always provide some sort of protection. However, it's totally up to you. You can definitely wait for this product to be available everywhere, even on Amazon, but you may then need to pay a higher price. So let's do a quick look at what blow away features this machine has. Their AMS can actually fit up to 16 different filaments at the same time. By default, each AMS can load up to four rolls of different filament, and each machine can link up to four AMS, so theoretically, you can mix 16 different colors in just one print. This machine is also crazy fast. It can print up to 400 millimeters per second with 20,000 millimeters per second squared acceleration. For your reference, if you print a 3D Benji with a normal 3D printer like an Ender 3, it prints at 50 millimeters per second with 500 millimeters per second squared acceleration, which is going to take one hour and 50 minutes. The Bamboo Lab X1 can print the same Benji with the same or even better quality within just 18 minutes. Unlike the Anchor Make M5, the most successful Kickstarter 3D printer campaign, it's a well-polished Ender 3 style Cartesian printer that swings the print bed back and forth as the Y-axis. There are also some add-on features, and it is a pretty nice machine overall, especially in terms of appearance. But one thing I don't like is that it claims to print five times faster than other printers at 250 millimeters per second with just 2,500 acceleration. From their test print clip, printing a 3D Benji took 45 minutes. That speed wasn't too bad, but it is not super impressive either, as a stock Ender 3 with clipper installed can print the same Benji in 45 minutes. That doesn't look like 250 millimeters per second to me, and it would be more like 125 to 150 millimeters per second. For 250 millimeters per second, the printing time of a Benchy with good print quality would be somewhere around 25 minutes, as we just can't print everything at 250 millimeters per second. We still need to slow down a little bit when printing the first layer, the walls, the bottom, and the top of the print. Besides having multiple colors and fast printing, the Bamboo Lab X1 has many sensors and a litter that can do something that no machine under $5,000 can do. It not only comes with an auto bed leveling sensor, but it has two sets of sensors for bed leveling. It also comes with a litter that can calibrate linear advance that predicts the nozzle pressure to control the filament flow, which normally needs to be calibrated by experienced users manually. As the machine can print fast when doing high speed printing, the print head moves fast and creates vibrations that affects the print quality. This printer can compensate for the vibration with all these sensors, the litter, and algorithms. All these blow-away features are ahead of everyone else. As for the hardware, it has a print volume of 256 by 256 by 256 millimeters. And it's a Core XY machine that uses linear rods on the Y and Z axis. It also uses carbon rods on the X axis to make it as lightweight as possible. There's also a steel structure chassis welded by robots. 
These two side panels are aluminum, the back panel is a steel sheet, and the front and the bottom are injection molded plastic with a glass door and glass top. It's fully enclosed, and the glass top can be removed for easy access. It not only has a dual Z axis, but a triple Z axis that levels itself automatically. The heated bed can reach up to 120 degrees Celsius, and the nozzle can reach 300 degrees Celsius. The chamber is not a heated chamber, but when the heated bed is heated up to 120 degrees Celsius within an enclosed chamber, it can keep the chamber temperature at 60 degrees Celsius. The extruder is a direct drive. In case you need to change them or do some maintenance, it's super easy to open it up and snap it back on with the magnet. It has a 5-inch touchscreen, supports Wi-Fi, and has a cloud feature that allows you to send the print job directly from the computer slicer or phone app. It has 4GB memory on board. The motherboard uses a Cortex M4 dual-core 32-bit processor, and there's another quad-core ARM A7 processor to do all other AI features. As the X1 and the X1 Carbon have a few differences, the X1 Carbon comes with a super large part cooling fan, a carbon filter, and a full HD 1080p camera for you to monitor the printer remotely or record time-lapse videos. The enclosure's side panels for the X1 Carbon are aluminum, and the X1 is polycarbonate. The X1 Carbon uses hardened steel for the extruder gears and nozzle, and the X1 uses steel. For the software, their bamboo slicer is not just a skinned Cura. It was from the open source Slick3R project, the Prusa Slicer, and the Super Slicer. As you may already know, the Prusa Slicer is a fork of Slick3R, and the Super Slicer is a fork of the Prusa Slicer. So the bamboo slicer is in the same family, and they also added many new algorithms. They told me they will make it open source in the second half of 2022 to contribute to the 3D printing community. As our schedule is a little bit overloaded, the original schedule to review this printer was in mid-June, but I just wanted to let everyone know and have the chance to get this awesome machine at a very low price as their Kickstarter campaign is starting on May 31st. You can be the first group of super early birds to get the low price. Just pledge and lock the low price first. If you find out there's any better machine, you can just cancel your pledge anytime before the campaign ends. Bamboo Lab did not offer any sponsorship to this video or my channel, and just sent me the machine to review like all of the other machines you see on my channel. I recommend this printer only because it blows me away, and I think this awesome printer and the real tech people at Bamboo Lab deserve a successful Kickstarter campaign. They focus on the tech side and show everyone just what they are capable of. I definitely want to see Bamboo Lab as the next big name in 3D printing, and they certainly can be. Now, I will show you a few test print video clips with my testing unit. Let's start with the sample file from the machine, which is a 17-minute Benchy. First, it printed some lines for the litter to calibrate the extruder. After the first few layers, it started to print extremely fast, in a way that I have never seen before from an out-of-the-box printer. The quality of the Benchy is nice, and it looks just like the 1.5 to 2 hour Benchies printed by other machines. Since I have seen other 12 minute 38 second Benchies from Bamboo Lab printing with ABS, I will try to do the same with my own ABS, which is just $18 ABS filament, and see what results I can get if I run the exact same G-code that they did in their video. As I want to close the door when printing ABS, I will just use the built-in camera to record this clip. I also put a timer at the top right to see how fast it can print.
As you can see, I can print ABS at this high speed and still get a pretty good result. There is some stringing as we are printing ABS without any cooling, but at this high speed, the quality is still pretty good. Next, I will try to print a calibration cube. It would normally take 30 minutes on a regular 3D printer. I didn't slice it super fast, and I just used the default profile, but I think a 9-minute cube should be fast enough. As you can see, the layers of this 9-minute cube looks good, and it just looks like a normal calibration cube that other printers would need 30 minutes to print. Then, I will print this dinosaur, which uses up almost the whole print bed. After I put everything together, the result is also pretty good. Finally, I will test out the ABS shelf brackets that I printed with ABS on many other printers. This bracket normally takes around 3 hours, but this machine can print the same bracket with good quality and zero warping in just 30 minutes, which is 6 times faster. By default, the ABS profile prints a brim, but I don't think this build plate needs a brim as it sticks very well and I can't see any signs of warping even when printing with ABS. The experience of using this Bamboo Lab X1 was completely different from any other 3D printer I have ever used. There are clearly some amazing engineers out there, but they were doing something else. And now, at least some of them are getting into the 3D printing industry. I will post a follow-up video on June 12th with more tests, like using the AMS with multiple filaments in different color, and talk more about what I think about this printer as well as the pros and cons after I have the chance to spend more time with it. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. My brother and I make a new video every weekend, so check out my channel on Mondays and you'll see something new. See you next week.